G'day guys, we're Man here. Welcome back to the workshop. We are working on more rules discussions because there's like a butt ton of little rules around the place. Uh, back with Adam. Say good day, buddy. Hello. <laughs> Taryn was talking to me about all these little optional rules that he's come across. We've yeah. talked about some other things, but there's a couple that I found quite interesting and they'd be quite useful. Yeah, I and think. They're, they're quickies, so we're going to do yeah. them together. Um, I think. We should go big first. Um, so, Gauss weapons. Did you know there's an optional rule with Gauss weapons? So, your Gauss rifles, your hags, all that sort of stuff. You can power them down. Okay. So, what you do is in the end phase of a turn, you can announce that you're powering your weapon down or powering it up if you've previously powered it down before. Um, you mark the change on your record sheet a powered down Gauss rifle may not fire, but does not explode if it suffers a critical hit. Nice. Okay. So it's still destroyed, obviously, but it won't blow up. So those of you that remember our uh, weapons ready and things like that, the Gauss weapon, the ammunition isn't explosive. It's just big slugs of metal. Mm. There's no propellant or anything, but if the Gauss weapon takes a hit, it will explode for the damage value of that ammo. So a Gauss rifle explodes for like 15 points. 15 I think it is, yeah. damage. Yeah. So if, say, you run out of ammo, which is possible. I mean, I'd be firing a Gauss rifle every turn if I had one. Um, if you run out of ammo, you can just power that down. And that way you're not risking all the magnets and electronics and things blowing your arm off. Yeah. Is is the... The basic gist of things. Well, that's, it is a bit, look, it is a big weapon. It's, it's, it takes up a lot of slots. Yeah. And it's just, once you, look, what are you getting, like eight shots per ton? Uh, yeah, Something I think like so. That. There's, the there's a lot of, like, when that technology became more available, there's a lot of inner sphere mechs that took it, but in most cases, all they really had was one ton. So you're talking eight shots. Now, yeah. that's good. Long range. That's quality. Damage. Yeah, yeah, it's good. But once you're out of ammo, and it can happen pretty quick, Mm. <laughs> that's quite nasty. That's that's kept a and lot of mechs sort of back. Yeah, you know. And under the the standard rules, you can't do this. This is this is not a thing. So even if you run out of ammo, your Gauss rifle is still active, which means that even if you don't have ammunition for that Gauss rifle, if it's hit, it will still explode for the fifteen damage. Yeah. So that is actually a really handy one. I I would be putting that into any game if I was taking. Gauss rifles. Yeah, definitely. If I know somebody else is taking Gauss rifles. I'd say, no, no, you can't. No, no, no. <laughs> but. <laughs> no. If, if you are playing higher tech levels, then this is a, a, a one to uh, seriously consider. This is page 102 of TAC Ops, by the way, yeah. just in case. There's, um, a, there's a couple of mechs that I sort of came to mind, and they are like assault ones. Yeah. So the, the Night Star, which yes. has one on each arm. And like two tons of ammo, isn't it? Or is it one? I think it's got, I think it's got twenty four shots or eight. Right, I don't so know. It's got like it's got at least two or maybe. three or something. So yeah. I mean, it has like an ERPPC and some lasers as backup and things like that. But once really, you don't you don't you've got the armor, but you don't want to be getting into combat mm. really. And that I mean, they're in the arms, right? Yes. So if you start taking a lot of damage to your arms, or you've got one of your arms that's like close to internal and you get to an end phase and you haven't taken a critical yet, it's not a bad move to just power that down yeah. and go, okay, well, just in case someone hits me there, I'm going to wait and I'll use my backup weapons until it's gone and then I'll come back up. Yeah, sort that's of right. Thing, you know? Yeah. But the, um, what was the other one? The Fafner, which... Uh, oh, yeah, that's the... Yeah. The, yeah. you got twin heavy guns. <laughs> Twin heavy oh, gals, like, oh. and that's that's a lot of that's a lot of damage if that gets hits too. That so is that is that's really really good. That's a great rule to have. Yeah, I, I quite like that one. Uh, the other one was actually a really funky little thing for physical attacks. Uh, if you guys remember, we did retractable blades. Oh yeah, uh, a while ago. What did you find? Um, so under the standard rules, I'm reading from page one three nine of Total War here. The retractable blade. During the movement phase, the controlling player must designate whether the blade is extended or retracted retracted before moving the unit on which it is mounted. So before you're allowed to move, you have to decide whether it's in or out. 
and that decides whether you um, can use that hand actuator or not, whether you can push or punch with that hand, right? So if you've got your blade extended, you can't push and you can't punch with that hand, right? But it's, it's either in or it's out at the beginning of the movement phase and you have to decide. The advanced rules, um, so the retractable blades have a risky uh, but deadly attack. So anytime a mech with a retractable blade that is retracted successfully punches, the controlling player can immediately announce that they're extending the retractable blade. Oh. This automatically inflicts a possible critical hit in the location successfully struck by the punch attack. <gasps> this additional possible critical hit is regardless of whether internal structure was damaged or not. And you roll on the critical hit table. If it's a mech or the appropriate vehicle crit table, if it's a vehicle. In the case of a successful punch against battle armor, a critical hit means the trooper inside the suit struck is automatically eliminated. So you can <laughs> punch you can punch an elemental out of his suit of armor. <laughs> Which I just love. I reckon that's great. But you have to immediately, the controlling player or the player with the with the blade has to make a 2d6 roll, and on a 10 plus, the blade is destroyed. That's so it, like, snaps plus. off. Okay. So I think I mentioned once before that that's six possibles out of 36. Yeah. So that's not too bad. No. For an instant that. critical hit. Oh, definitely. That's so oh, Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I think that's a cool one to put in if you're if you're doing a lot of physical attacks. That is that is solid. And remember you've got a one in six chance when you're punching of hitting the head. All, so uh, all the word of Blake <laughs> players are like, I love this rule. I'm going to use it all the time. <laughs> all the time. Why wouldn't you wow that's, I mean that sort of makes sense. Like fluff wise, you know, that's that's kinda yeah. cool. I imagine that's how it would go. I, I'm just, I'm just seeing like a, a heavy mech with a retractable blade on it punching an assault mech in the face and snapping the blade off. In the <laughs> Take that. I just love that. That that image is in my head now, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of it. But if you have s smaller, faster mechs as well, yeah, all working as a team, yep, that's brutal. You you could use that. I mean, if you're punching. If, if you're punching from lower, you're still getting some solid value out of that. Like if you've got multiple levels and you've got lots of little mechs with retractable blades and you have one down here that punches to the leg, yep. that's a potential hip. Yeah, that's right. That, that's, yeah. that's like a potential foot actuator damage. That's, that is solid value for money right there, I reckon. Even if you roll that 10 plus, if you can take an assault mech's hip out, it's not going anywhere. You can have a retractable blade on each arm yes. as well. Technically, yes. And Ooh. like I say, this, this overrides the fact that you have to decide whether it's in or out in the movement phase. You can you can go up, punch, and if you're successful, you go sneak and yeah. straight through whatever it is you're punching. That is that is awesome. I love that. Wow. I, I have to find a mech that has a cannon retractable blade, I guess. <laughs> oh, there's, there's, there's a few of them. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I've seen at least one just recently, but I can't remember what the name of it was because I was looking through some other mechs for something else that I'm doing at the moment. So, yeah, that was it was pretty cool. Wow, that's um, a couple of good nuggets you found there, mate. Yeah. That's really cool. I, I would, um, I mean, if you're full on and you're doing some serious campaign style stuff, I'd seriously consider putting those two in. And that, that retractable blade one is on 104 of Tac Ops, and the Gauss weapons are on 102 of Tac Ops. Yeah. Oh, but, the yeah. Thunderhawk. That's another good one. That's also an assault. That's, That's got three. Gauss, right? Three Gauss yeah. rifles mounted on it. I, I just remember the Gunslinger yeah. and the Pillager. Yes. The Pillager yeah. is the one that Hutch Blue my commander's head off. <laughs> so I remember the pillager every time. <laughs> every time somebody says Gauss rifle, it's like, blah. That's, oh, that's a nasty mech. But if you, for tanks, that's quite good too because mm. it tends to be quite unforgiving when ammo blows up in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it, the Alicorn? Alicorn tank? Alicorn, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. That, no, that's if, good. if you somehow manage to run an Alicorn out of ammo, that would be a very handy rule to have. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> yeah, instant matter transmission would be better because then you could get the hell out of there. Because mm -hmm. once you're out of ammo with that guy, you got nothing. Yeah, true. Oh, dear. 
But yeah, that's that's a couple of li little weapon ones that we've um, finishing off a bit with. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces out there. We'll go into some missiles or something maybe. But yeah, those two were worth a quick mention, I reckon. Yeah, it was. I'm really liking what you're finding for your uh, <laughs> your little podcasty things here. There's, I'm loving there's it. some cool stuff. There's some very very cool stuff. And if you guys out there have the option and you want some solid optional rules, Tac Ops is a really 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 good investment for that sort of thing. But even if you can just get the download or something like that, or I mean, just pause the screen. Hopefully these have been binging up, and you can just pause the screen, write the rule out, type it up on on a thing and print it out and take it to your local club or whatever and go, hey, can we use this? Mm. <laughs> That'd work. Yeah. All good. All right. So I think we'll call it there. You guys stay groovy and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.